What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be starting out. What is it about Tesla that has people keep coming back? Not only down to the product of EV, which is usually often spoken about, but today I'm going to take you guys into a different dynamic, a different sector or a different service that Tesla will be provided. Shout outs to everybody. It's going to be another installment of Everyone Hates Tesla. You know how we get down. And so we're going to hop straight into the video and get this thing cracking. Much respects to Matt. Matt is in the building. Uh, so we're subscribed to his channel. So subscribe to his channel and check out this video. And we're going to be talking about the contents of what's going on with Tesla because it's about to change. Own Arc is invested like $100 million. What is it about Tesla, guys, are so sure about where you keep investing and keep doubling down on your claim? The business of Tesla transforms uh, if they're able to deliver uh, robo taxi capability to their cars. The way to think about it, you're going to buy a Cybertruck for them. You know, and which is a great and amazing like vehicle, like you'll probably be able to drive it on Mars someday, you know, but they're getting like a one time operating profit off selling mm. that vehicle to you. If that can turn into a robo taxi, then it could do, you know, maybe 100,000 miles per year and they'll take a platform fee just like Uber or Lyft does. Uh, and so maybe it's a 50 percent platform fee at a dollar per mile. Uh, they'll get fifty thousand dollars in revenue per year at like software margins. and so. Like you can do all the math and you can conclude that instead of making money off every vehicle sold just once, they're going to make maybe 5x more money, maybe 10x more money off every vehicle they have on the road every year. Uh now, guys, that's a big change of the financial format and the way we generate revenue to have a reoccurring revenue versus having something that is a one time purchase. And of course, into the near future, but that's if they decide to stay on with the brand of Tesla. And so to have that reoccurring revenue from a robo taxi. Now, most people are going to be actually clueless about what the robo taxi is. So I'm going to show that and bring it up on the screen. And a lot of you guys just think that it's probably out there. It's outlandish that something like this is even coming to pass. But in places already in California, you already have versions of robo taxis through Waymo, with radar, LiDAR, and et cetera, other sensories. But Tesla FSD supervised has came tremendously far, and the game has changed since they used more different training models in order to actually increase the machine learning. Instead of having coders code what to do, like pull up to the light, make a right, make a left, we've scrapped that. And now the computer is learning just as a human learns on how to drive with other video footage of great drivers, not sucky drivers. All right. So some of you guys out here are not the best drivers, but that net, we're not taking your lead. OK. And so this new revenue model is vastly different and creates income and revenue in a different way that wasn't available before. And once again, 50 percent, that's what they call software margins. like. Those are large margins, 50%. And the car business, man, these guys are barely scraping. They're barely scraping it with 5%. Uh, assuming that they can software upgrade the vehicles so that they can drive themselves, which they claim they can, and we believe they can, and we think it's going to happen over the next couple of years. So okay. with that as the framework, um, you know, it's, it's actually an amazing business that people don't understand right now, because right now it's just making money off of selling you a Cybertruck, which by the way, is a pretty good business itself, but, but the, the robo taxi business transforms, um, what Tesla is and can become when you get the Cybertruck, you should get uh, full self-driving as well. And as Elon Musk already explained, they're going to put the auto in automobile. And I think that they can do it. Not just because it's Elon saying it. It's because if you look at the track record, against most people most people tend to think that tesla does not deliver and if they deliver it's late well most people have short-term gratification 
or they want things to be done very expeditiously. And they're used to Apple coming up with iPhone 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, which is easily done. It's already scaled, so it's easy to scale. And they don't change much about the phone, which requires a redesign of the whole manufacturing process. And so net net, Tesla is going to miss their objective because building a car is one of the most complex assembly processes in the world. It's not simple and easy. And Tesla has made it more simple and easy and efficient. And that is a huge engineering feat on its own. And of course, they have redesigned not only the assembly line, but also the process of an assembly line. And I think that's an IP that we don't realize. And a lot of people who are long-term investors or even short-term shorters don't realize about the company is that they have a keen ability of actually making things more efficient and effective. Now, going along to this robo-taxi where we're going to put the auto and automobile, I believe that they do have the greatest engineers and some of the most talented individuals working at the case. And it's going to happen in due time. Well, I use it all the time in LA and it is it is life-changing. Just being able to not be stressed about driving around in the city is it's really uh, uh, a remarkable product as it exists today. And we think it's going to get Bobby, your cyber truck, G. So Ark Invest doubles down on FSD and robo taxis. And we know from a year ago that their 2027 Tesla stock price target is $2,000. And Kathy Wood has been on TV recently in the recent weeks. And together with Tasha Keeney from Ark Invest, they are all emphasizing that they are going to update their Tesla stock price target. And it is actually going to be higher than two thousand dollars but of course their new target is going to be for 2028 and if you would like tesla stock to go to two thousand dollars for sure click the like button and it's incredible to hear that brett benton is well i definitely would appreciate that but more so i would just appreciate that the company becomes more effective and effective and efficient i'm not really gonna you know focus on the price every day every day like man i want to go to two thousand then what you know i just want the company to grow and continuously grow and do things in which is doing now, which is creating things that are like thought almost impossible, like robo taxis. And then just the energy sector and Optimus, there's so many things that the company has that I see as profitable and very pow uh, powerful when it becomes revolutionary technology and people utilize it and say, wow, why do I need a car? For me, I'm good, bro. Full self driving, if he could take up a good amount from a commute from DC, to Maryland and Maryland to DC. I would love it. The commuter's not fun. Okay. Anybody that knows that traffic or LA traffic also understands. So traffic is not a great thing. Driving is not fun unless I'm driving something for a short period of time that's exciting. Right. I'm driving a drop top B BMW Z4. I'm driving a Lamborghini. That's fun. But after a week, I'm like, all right, take back the keys for the Lamborghini. I'm done. I'm pretty bored of this. <laughs> is able to drive in LA on FSD without stress. For me, if I drive it here in Vancouver, as long as I don't go downtown, yeah, I think it actually takes stress away. If I drive downtown, I'm not so sure about it because I do need to intervene here and there and not for safety reasons usually, but because it would do something rude like skip 50 cars that are waiting to turn right. I just take over before the car does something silly like that. It's not a safety concern. It's just uncomfortable. If you need something else. And guys, it's slowly coming for surely. It's just going to take some time. I mean, people are going to have their complaints. People already have complaints just on the road right now. It's called road rage, guys. A lot of people have road rage and have issues with human drivers. And so people are very uh, subjective about what they should do on the road. Of course, there's etiquette, there's the rules, there's the laws. But then people are like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have been that close to the curve, this close to the curve. So I hear that a lot in the reviews, but it has come tremendously far and it does better than humans do. So at the end of the day, that's that that's all that needs to be done. OK, I had a guy driving me in Bangkok at about 180 kilometers of my um, uh, hour and he was on his cell phone. And I had a female driver also do the same. They were just on their phones clicking texting while driving that fast and was like like bro why are you texting a message what's that important 
and they were sending emojis and just focusing on the phone. They like looked at the road every other 30 seconds. I was like, what the heck? I told the lady to pull over. I got me another driver in the middle of nowhere. And then I had them pick me up and take me for the rest of the drive back to Patia. Cause I was like, bro, you're not just going to do this with my life. So humans are like, we're, we're not honest about it, but net net, we're some terrible drivers. Watershed moment. I mean, this is three years in the making that Tesla has been trying to get into China from an FSD perspective. And, and this unlocks a golden opportunity, not just for Tesla in China, but I think globally, it's a game changer, in my opinion, from a miles run perspective. So from a data perspective, China, that's the golden goose. So this is going to seriously advance Tesla from an FSD perspective. And Musk knew that. That's why he did this trip. It was obviously a surprise one. And I think it's going to come as a surprise in a good way to investors. Long time in the making. It's a trophy case moment for Musk getting back on that plane, come back from Beijing. Now, let me just pause on that. Um, so for people just catching up, um, the stock has been taking a beating for a while. Uh, Isaac uh, Walter Isaac wrote a book uh, about Elon Musk and people were debating back and forth whether he was going to scrap the 25 affordable model of car, which is the Model 2, apparently, or maybe possibly. And they were like, oh, is he going to go all in a robo-taxi? So people were just feeling bad about it and thinking that he was just going full in a robo-taxi and was ignoring the affordable car. And Elon had to clear that up on a call. And then once he cleared it up on a call, the stock recovered. And then he went to trip to Beijing. Then the stock also increased. It's just like, guys, come on. As I told you always, it's just like stock market has these times where people are just like, there's a lot of negative news and anonymous tips, allegedly, where they're like, oh, man, some spy, somebody who's participating in espionage gave up the information. And all of a sudden, the whole market is moving based on that. And now they're drumming up conspiracies, asking Elon stupid questions during the actual conference call about conspiracy theories online because Walter Isaac wrote a dang biography and said this happened back in the office in 1990. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. Right? So anyways, he went to Beijing, got approval. In my opinion, China has always realized the potential in Tesla. Unfortunately, a USA and Americans can't recognize the potential in a strong company like Tesla, like China can. And that happens not only on the governmental side and also on the citizen or, or the citizen side. They actually adapt to Tesla and actually open the doors and work in collaboration with Tesla. And hence why a nation can bring themselves to be one of the poorest countries on the planet of Earth with African countries and be the second most powerful country economic wise in the world within a span of 60 years. So there's nothing they are a force to be reckoned with. And let's continue on and hear what Dan has to say about Beijing and also Matt. Dan Ives is not wrong when he says this is a watershed moment for Tesla. But really, that began in August of 2023 when Elon Musk demonstrated V12 FSD. And to many, it became apparent when they got FSD V12 in their own cars. What's really the, the game-changing nature of this uh, particular move? Autonomous FSD, when you talk about the golden vision, it can't happen without China. Hmm. So this was a missing piece in the puzzle. The fact that they got this clearance from Beijing, it, it unlocks really now the whole vision. And, and I think that's why it's important in terms of the longer term, what Tesla could achieve, not just in China, but globally when it comes to FSD. And I think this is just the start. It's obviously a win for Baidu as well, but it really shows. And now finally, it's not just talk. Walk in the walk. This is, I think it's a historical moment for Tesla in its FSD effort. A historical moment for Tesla. I agree with that. But without China, Tesla couldn't solve FSD. No, 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 no. no. I, I 100% disagree with that. If you're late. Yeah, most definitely. He was talking waste mine talk. I, I think Tesla can do it without China. And if they didn't grant them the access, then that, that's, that's what it would have been at that moment in time doesn't mean things couldn't have shifted. And also later in the video, you're going to see actually other politicians and regulators 
experience FSD in different European countries and love it. Relations between the U.S. and China remain not exactly great. And if they escalate in terms of getting much, much worse from here on, and especially with the U.S. basically batting TikTok, things could go wrong. But so far, it seems like Elon Musk is navigating this whole situation extremely well. But assuming things go wrong, Tesla is going to solve autonomy with China or without. Now, of course, it's better for Tesla if Tesla can also enter the Chinese market because it's so huge. What about China tech versus U.S. tech? So, guys, this is whole geopolitics and net net at the end of the day, it's a lot of things are said on the surface and the things are done differently on the back end, especially when at one point in time, when America levied restrictions and sanctions on China of specific ter types of software applications and et cetera, were not available, or being able to be utilized in China and then likewise in America. And what actually ended up happening was most of the Fortune 100 companies, the top 100 companies in the United States of America came to America, at least the regulators, and was like, look, guys, you're going to have to give us a waiver. If you don't give us a waiver, then we're really, our business, we're going to have to shut it down. We go hand in hand, China and America. And so <laughs> a lot of companies like NVIDIA a lot of the process, or even Apple, a lot of the process happens in Asia. So if we don't continue to have that bridge and start to burn it, then we're going to have real issues. So you could say whatever you want to say to the public, and y'all can go back and do this WWE Vince McMahon wrestling thing. But at the end of the day, we're going to backdoor this. We're going to write some you know, kind of waivers in the background and allow us to continue to do business the way we were doing business. And they're like, well... We'll put a minor restriction on it and say, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then they keep it pushing. So that net talking heads reading from a teleprompter about some geopolitical tensions. Look, cat. Look, I think right now U.S. tax ahead of China. When we talk about AI, I think what Tesla, they're trying to thread the needle here. They're trying to take that technology, even though Baidu, it's stored in Shanghai, to actually be able to use that globally. And I think it just comes down to there's only two companies that have been able to thread the needle in terms of China, U.S. It's Cook and Cupertino, and it's Musk and Tesla. And that's why this is a huge win for Musk, even domestically, for him just to come in there during the auto show, come out, get FSD approval. There's no doubt that Tesla needs China, uh, you know, with, uh, Tes with uh, Elon Musk making that surprise visit. But does China need FSD? I was at the auto show. I saw all these new range of EVs. I hadn't been back uh, to the auto show in four years because of COVID. And the, the technology has rapidly improved here, where a lot of these technology companies, whether it's Xiaomi or Huawei or others, are into this space. I'm going to go later today in Dashian District and get a test drive of autonomous robo taxis by by um, pony ai and toyota does does china need fsd from tesla yeah guys listen there's other cars there's other manufacturers but uh, often these guys go to you know events and expos and be like i've been to expo the future is coming the competition is near they say all this cap stuff and at the end of the day it's like bro there's a difference between having cars at a show right and then actually having a mass produced and then there's also a difference between i'm about to go see a trial of an fsd than having actually cars out on the road hitting the pavements in the streets that's where we're at and so there's a big difference between the two and obviously if they didn't need them then china would be like no but china really just allows and if you know anything about just how foreign policy goes and trades and especially in a sensitive country like china Man, they're only going to allow you to operate within their country if there is something that they need from it and out of the deal. That's why Facebook, YouTube, and Amazon are not operational in China. They don't need Amazon. Shoot, actually, it goes against their own sovereignty from their perspective. So with that being said, Tesla is a company, and they're like, well, we kind of need your IP. We kind of need to take heed and see what you're doing and understand it so we can make our own formula for success. And so net net, yes, they need. China only allows businesses that be to be opened in China that they need. They're not gonna let you go up there and open a steel manufacturer because China does that well and they got that covered.
So his basis of even China's approach to economics is off just by like saying, do they need it? Why, why would they approve it? China actually does not approve companies that they don't need if they can do it themselves. That's a lot. Well, look, I mean, most most fouled person probably in the world. And Tesla, I view as a trophy case for Beijing. And, and that's why Musk is there, because despite what we've seen in terms of just the massive competition domestically and so, so impressive from BYD and others, China needs Tesla just like Tesla needs China. And I think this is an important visit, especially in what I believe will be a rebound in China for Tesla. But FSD, that's the golden goose. That's what Musk is going after here. We know that Tesla still exports a lot of vehicles from Giga Shanghai to other countries. And I just wonder, maybe Elon Musk went over there and talked to the Chinese officials and perhaps hinted that, you know, it's better to have low unemployment in China than high unemployment. And it might be better if I decide to build and expand more here in China than, let's say, in India. So how about uh, we make a deal? I'll invest more money later on here in China and you guys for now approve FSD. And if not, maybe, um, you know, uh, India is telling me to build a factory over there and then maybe we don't need to employ as many people in China because we can export to other markets from India instead of from China. I'm definitely not saying this is exactly what happened, but it's very small possibility this could have gone down. Yeah, mm, for sure. Maybe those were factors to it. I think that makes sense. And maybe it's not even something that needs to be said. It's something that's known. On, like when you're negotiating, you're like, okay, look, I know this guy has been exploring for expansion or deciding to expand in India, which I don't think is a good thing because India is just not ready in itself. Plus, the economy in India, they're just going to be haters. They're going to be blocking Tesla left and right, levels of bri bri bribery and corruption that are just out of this world. And plus, majority of the people are just not ready to purchase a car unless it was the affordable car. But outside of that infrastructure, I mean, like there's a lot of things and a lot of hurdles. And they're going to be nice to you and smile in your face when it comes down to, you know, you, you saying and announcing that you're going to produce something there. But once you, you know, kind of sign the contracts and invest the money and put the money up around the back end, that's where they're going to get you. Now they're going to start kind of, you know, emphasizing the push for their own local domestic markets that they have massive amounts of ownership and shares. And that's the regulators, too. They probably own or get kickbacks. So they're going to be pushing that and they're going to be undermining Tesla. Down, I mean, Elon was extremely effective and convincing and he just did the whole thing so quickly. And it came out of nowhere, pretty much. How he did it exactly for now will remain a mystery, but maybe something will eventually come out. Is there a risk to this relationship, though, between Tesla and China? Dan, I wonder, because just given the geopolitics right now, I'm, I'm guessing some of these... Here they come with the drama. Get in with the geopolitics. Bro, what are you talking about? Apple, Fox, Foxconn makes Apple's phone. Like... We already invested in China. Shoot, all the products from Amazon come from China. Alibaba, Lazada, et cetera. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, with the tensions and it, with Tesla, like, bro, what do you mean? A lot of business. This is like one of our largest trading partners. Like, come on, lady. That just exists for the whole entire market then. DC hawks, China hawks are not too thrilled with maybe what comes out of this trip as well. Could that be, you know, this relationship could be more vulnerable than we think? Hey, what are you doing? It's making money, not before you. Yeah, Allegedly. Let me show you. Most Allegedly. You ain't making money. Look, I think it's no different when cooks visited China and others. I mean, it's all part of this. Exactly. No different than when cooks, Tim Cooks, Apple, like, bro, it's no different. 10% politician, 90% CEO, right? When, when, when you look at Musk, I say almost the same for Cook. But when you look at Tesla, it is massively important within China. And, and it's very important to have Musk, I think a very important part of the EV environment within China. And I think that's something where this visit, the timing's important. Because like you say, the geopolitical, it's a cold tech war. 
but China needs okay. Musk, and that's why, and, and, and vice versa. And I think this is a huge positive that would be very uh, viewed favorably by investors tomorrow. I'm not quite sure how much China at this moment needs Tesla, other than the benefit that China gets from Tesla from exporting the vehicles from China to overseas because a lot of these Chinese companies are having a hard time selling their vehicles over. So we're going to move a little bit forward because they kind of tend to go back and forth about it. And like I said, any problems that exist for Tesla exists for the other companies, which are American, that operate in China. And I'm telling you, if China cuts off a lot of things for Amazon, Amazon's just done, period, because everything just gets drop shipped from China and all the factories onto your, you know, Amazon storefront. And then that's it. Without that, they're screwed. Right. And then when you also add Apple into the equation, also them too. They ain't got no dang assembly lines in America where they're putting together Apple phones. Like, what are you talking about? So, but Tesla, we just lose Shanghai. We still have Berlin. We still have Giga Texas, Nevada, Fremont. Like, we have other factors in the world besides just one in China or kind of like, once again, third party or white glove service. Like, so net net, let's move forward. I think we'll be all right. Just like every other people will be all right. You know, these guys keep going back, always drumming up some drama. I mean, they got beef with this person. Like, get up out of here. He cannot compete. How many companies do you know spending basically $10 billion to build FSD? Hmm? How relevant is the existing U.S. data in training for Chinese full self-driving or regionally is this completely separate training because i imagine i mean data you get training in des moines isn't going to be that great in new york city right we drive different in different places in this world yes and no so what we've learned drive different would y'all be driving through we drive different in des moines that's some dumb stuff. man we drive different on the east side down the west side or down there those people from the south drive different from those people in the east and those from the north from Confederate states, like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you know, I was, I, I, I could drive in Thailand with my U.S. driver's license and a, you know, learning permit or international permit. Like, I don't have to go to a new course. I don't have to do anything. So, I mean, and I'm just a person, right? Like, there's no special thing about me. Like, man, south of south of Thailand is different from north of Thailand. Like, come on, bro. Who gave you the mic, man? Who gave you this job? Learned from FSD in the U.S. is the highway driving is already as good as it's going to get. It's amazing. Um, the difficult part is the urban environments. And what we've noticed from urban environments in China is that they actually are pretty similar to urban environments in the United States. Um, and the other thing I would note is, remember, the Chinese, it's a central government authority that wants this to happen, that wants to have level two plus and, and potentially more robo taxis, et cetera. So there is a more likelihood that we'll get to autonomy faster, actually, in China than the will in, be in the US. So while like you know, rural areas, highways may be somewhat different, um, that part is not the difficult part. It's really the urban environments. And in the dense urban environments in China, it's actually not as, as different as what we have in the US. I was born in Europe and I grew up there and then I came here to North America to Canada and driving over here is a bit different. You need to know a few different rules over here. And I've been to China, to the mainland and in a few places in Asia. And if you are a really good driver in the US or in Europe, you will be okay overseas as well. You're allowed to drive everywhere, basically. Like, you know, especially with an American driver's license. Like, they don't stop you from driving. Like, you got to take a China driving course. You got to take a Thai driving course. Like, for the most part, they're like, okay, you could drive in America. You could drive in Europe. Okay, you're good over here in China. Okay, you're good over here in Japan. I know I've been living overseas for about mm, 18 years. So with that being said, I'm pretty sure I know about driving overseas. Well, you just need to know the peculiarities, the specifics of the law. But Tesla has already proven that it works in Europe. And if it works in Europe, then I'm sure it's going to work in China as well. For example, Tesla did a 45-minute drive for a regulator, and it drove from downtown Munich 
to the airport, so not exactly the easiest drive in the world, and it only had one disengagement. And that's without lots and lots and lots and lots of data from Europe. I'm pretty sure Tesla has pretty much no data that it's putting into FSD from Europe into training FSD. Maybe it somehow has, maybe it's just running in shadow mode. Maybe Tesla is doing that in Europe, but I think most of the data that Tesla is using to train FSD on is from the US. Yeah, maybe it is from the US, maybe it's not, but we're still moving for it. We're still making moves. It works in Europe too. Looking out for investors. Working in Europe, that sounds extremely exciting. Investors, is there a kind of TikTok risk here for Tesla? I mean, Teslas are, you know, driving around with cameras on them, sensors, looking at who's going where, how people drive social societal benefit that China's getting that they're not going to want to do that. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for a long time where they didn't allow that data to go back to the U.S. for the, you know, algorithmic learning. So clearly the reason why they accepted it now is there's a reason, and it's what you just pointed out. It's safety. You know, FSD in the U.S. is five times safer than a regular car, not 5% more, five times safer, right? So, you know, governments like China, certain states in the U.S., they're looking for the greatest good to society. It's saving lives. It's it's five times better, guys. Five times. Okay. We're already there. The rest of you guys just have to catch up, but that's okay. Some of you guys are mustard. And you're just gonna have to catch up. Definitely not going to get into politics about China and everything, but I'll just say that uh I don't think that Tom is right here, really. I'm not sure exactly why China is approving it. I think Elon said something and they said, yeah, that sounds good. I think if it wasn't for Elon Musk, this wouldn't be approved. Does this end up helping Tesla longer term with what might be seen as a margin problem, right? There have been all these price cuts as Chinese EV competitors are going up against bro price cuts and a company being able to cut their prices and still come up with a good operation margin a profit at the end of the day it shows that even within a cyclical market and when there could be a downturn the way it is now with high interest rates that's a very flexible durable and diversified company and that's something that we should celebrate versus something we should look at as bad uh worth like 70 to 80 percent of my price target for for a long time now, almost a year. So it's not only- And so Tesla secures Chinese regulator or regulatory approval. And that's something that's good at the end of the day. Now, these guys are gonna speculate. These guys are gonna go back and forth and make it seem as if there is some issues, but there's not. Well, you can get. So part of it, it's the valuation you get from re-rating the stock as a tech company, a software company. The other aspect, exactly what you pointed out is the margin story and we've seen what's happened with auto margins coming down they probably will come down some more with a new affordable car but it doesn't matter if you can slap on an amazing subscription on it that gets you a higher margin so if we could see margins overall in aggregate slowly creep up because of fsd take rate and we're hearing already the version 12 free trial was a smashing success then that translates into greater margins overall You'll definitely see the narrative for Tesla change from being a car company to something obviously much, much more. By the way, when Tom Narayan talks about robot taxis and FSD, what he means, I heard him talk about this a few days ago, he doesn't think that level five autonomy is possible. Meaning Now, whether he does or does not, let me not get into that, but... Guys, that's the gist of it. So FSD is here. Um, it's steadily being developed and rolled out. And I think that it's going to come a long way. And it has came a long way. And it's just the rest needs to play out. Much respects to China for opening it up, whether they open it up for safety of citizens, whether they open it up because of Elon. It's irrelevant because um, we'll never know as of now. But net net. I think that they did a great job and they've done a great job ever since they allowed Tesla to operate in China with 100% ownership, the only company to operate in such fashion and with such a ownership of structure, that basically ownership 100% in the entire China mainland. And so they've been working with Tesla, Elon, and so they're just continuing the pattern. Much respects and we appreciate it. 
And of course, we can help not only China, but also ourselves. And I think that this is something that just most people don't know because they love to hate. They love to drum up geopolitics and, oh, man, you know, we're two days from World War Three, And you know how these normies be, especially these news anchors. And they're hard. They find it hard pressed to look in long term. And even them, when they talk about the stock, most of the time, they're talking about the stock about this. They're talking about what the stock has done year to date, what the stock has done the last six months, what has it done in the last month. What has it done in the last five days? What has it done in the last day? Well, we're looking at what has it done in the last five years, and we're looking at what has it done throughout its entire lifetime, which is no more than almost a decade and some change. And when you look at that, now we look at a stock that rides from $1.28 to an all-time high of 407 to at least in the last year to two, revolving around a place around $200. So $1 to $200, you let me know if that's a strong story for a strong company, how we turn good to great and we don't follow the short term month, six months, year to date, year, month, five days, one day, seven hours. This is how they do. And so we just want to peel back the layers of the detail of the company, see how the company is actually operating and then see, huh? What are we going to be able to see before Wall Street sees it? What are we going to be able to see? And what do we see about the potential of this company prior to Wall Street? There was people like that with Apple. There was people like that with NVIDIA. There was people like that with Facebook, Google. Most people did not understand AWS, Amazon's web service. They were like, man, this is long. This is stupid. Wall Street did not understand. But not until the profits came on that Excel sheet. And once the profits started to play, then the stock shot up tremendously. And so we want to get in early by understanding the technicalities that Wall Street does not understand. Now they understand the numbers and the revenue, but sometimes they can't even understand how it would make money in such sectors or such services. We have to understand that and play it close to the chest with any company that we invest in. And that's our information arbitrage. That's how we stay ahead of even the big leagues and the big dogs. Shout outs to the robo taxi. I don't know if it will actually look like this, but even if it does, it's pretty sick. I can't wait to get in the car without having to drive with a strange driver and just get in my own private chauffeur, democratized and user friendly. Shout out to Tesla for making luxuries more accessible to the average person. And that's something that Henry Ford did himself. And if you have time, go check out the Model 3, the new refurbished one. Just go check it out. Enjoy it. Ride in it. Put your feet in it. Smell it. Taste it. And see how you like it. Everyone loves to hate Tesla.